All right, here we are again, um, same day, or maybe it's not the same day and I just wear the same clothes all the time. I'll let you guys decide. Um, legislative oversight. Legislative oversight is quite simply, it is the ex legislative branch keeping tabs on the executive branch, making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. This is an example of a check and balance. This is, you know, keeping an eye on the president. Okay, so the first example is the Congressional Research Service. The Congressional Research Service is an organization that does research for any member of Congress, no matter whether they're a senator or a member of the House, whether they're a Democrat or Republican, so they can get information on a subject then they don't rely on the executive branch in case the executive branch is lying to them. So this is a way for them to gather information about programs, about just research in general, about policy. That way they don't have to rely on what the executive branch says. The Government Accountability Office, what they do is, actually I might, maybe I'll just show you the website real quickly. So I probably should have planned the size of this uh, section better, but basically the, the main job of the GAO is that they are an auditing agency to determine whether federal funds are being spent effectively or efficiently. They're basically investigating whether things have been done properly or improperly, have has the government done things that are illegal, spend money illegally, and they are also evaluating how well government programs work. Um, you know, are they meeting the objectives that the program is supposed to be meeting? Are they spending money and doing what they're supposed to be doing, but is no change actually happening? So these are kind of the ideas of what uh, they do. Um, and it's a big deal because they are constantly auditing what the federal government is doing. All right. Okay. Lobbyists are also keeping track, um, informing Congress about oversight issues. If a environmental lobbyist feels like the EPA is not enforcing a law or like a policy correctly and should be doing something else, they would notify um, Congress so they can do oversight. On the other hand, if an energy company felt like they were applying a rule to protect the environment, but we're doing it in a way that was unfair, illegal, they might also contact um, the government for oversight. So everyone's kind of paying attention. Constituents and the press are also providing um, members of Congress with examples of when they should be conducting oversight. Um, constituents might complain that something is happening that shouldn't be happening, and the press can do the same thing. And if a story makes it on the news, then it's more likely to be dealt with. Um, an oversight, you know, we talked about the difference between fire alarm and police patrol in the homework. Police patrol, I mean, I think it's not explained very clearly from the website. Police patrol means that the Congress is regularly checking in on someone, and that, like, on the EPA or the FDA or some organization, some in, you know government agency. They don't have time to do that on a regular basis, so police patrol often doesn't end up happening. Whereas, though for example, the Republicans tend to not always like what the EPA does, so they might constantly monitor what the EPA is doing to make sure that they are not exceeding their authority. The other idea is a fire alarm is like when there's an emergency, like the BP oil spill, all of a sudden that's a disaster and Congress is focusing on what was BP doing, why wasn't the federal government paying more attention to this, so it's kind of an after the effect. So police patrol is constantly monitoring and um, fire alarm is just after an emergency happens they check in. Both of these are examples of oversight, or methods of oversight. And the most common method of oversight is really a hearing where a subcommittee or a committee will call the members of the executive branch down or other um, experts to testify in front of Congress so that they can investigate what went wrong. Why did the Obama administration allow illegal weapons to get to Mexican drug cartels in the operation that they stupidly called the Fast and the Furious after five terrible movies that undoubtedly will make eight more of. Um, till Vin Diesel is 
much uglier than he is now. I don't know how to, how to deal with that one. Um, the hearings, anyway, so they call members of, con members of the executive branch up and they have to testify. And it's required that they have to testify in front of the legislative branch. It's embarrassing, and this is how they do some of their investigation. All right, the last example here of legislative oversight, at least on this slide, is the War Powers Act. As we've discussed previously, the Congress declares war, but the president is the um, commander-in-chief. The, that means once Congress has declared war, essentially the commander-in-chief can do whatever he or she wants to do with the military. The War Powers Act was a reaction to Vietnam. The Congress decided they wanted more power. And so the goal of it was, was that for the president was allowed to move troops overseas without declaring war, but had to... Uh, informed the Congress that the President had done so within 48 hours. And after 60 days, the Congress could demand that the President bring troops back without Congress's permission, and they could be extended an additional 30 days, so up to 90 days, so Congress, Congress wasn't asking troops to come home, they get immediately, they get an additional, the President could have additional 30 days, so they could protect the troops' safety. The War Powers Act, the idea was all of a sudden this act restricted the power of the president. However, there's some argument that this act is A, unconstitutional. Nothing in the War Powers Act really is supported by the Constitution because the commander-in-chief is the commander-in-chief. So there's some debate about this. Usually, presidents just inform Congress that they have, have sent troops within action 48 days, and they comply with it, usually with a written letter saying, we do not believe that this is constitutional. President Obama, in the Libya, um, when troops were used in, like, Air Force troops were used in Libya, did not inform Congress within 48 hours, and it was declared, Congress declared this to be illegal. In the end, the War Powers Act in many ways has strengthened the president's hand, even though the intention was to make it weaker, because it has sort of given the president permission to send troops abroad without declaring war. And so if we don't officially declare war, like we didn't declare war in Vietnam or in Iraq, um, when we don't do that, then Congress's power is severely limited. So the War Powers Act allows the president in many ways to send troops without doing that. So it didn't work out nearly as well as they, um, Congress thought it would. All right. And, all right, so we already talked about the GAO. I mean, examples of oversight, the Government Accountability Office, they do investigations to see if they are correctly, if the federal government is correctly doing its job. You can call committee and subcommittee hearings. The Justice um, Justice Committee could look at call Attorney General Eric Holder to talk about what they were thinking when they were lost guns to Mexican drug cartels. Um, impeachment um, is an example of oversight. I would like to just take a brief moment to say that the House of Representatives impeaches the president. It only takes a majority vote, and two presidents have been impeached. That would be Andrew Johnson, and it would be Bill Clinton. Neither was convicted. The conviction is what happens in the Senate. And no president has been removed from office, and that takes a two-thirds vote in the Senate. That means 67 senators. Um, other examples is that the is there is approval of judges, that the Senate is required to approve um, judges with a majority vote. They approve cabinet members and sub-cabinet members with a majority vote as well. On the other hand, for the Senate to approve a treaty, it requires a two-thirds vote. But so the Senate's approval of judges, the Senate's approval of cabinet members, and the Senate's approval of treaties, these are all examples of oversight because it is the legislative branch looking at what the executive branch is doing, deciding if they like it, and then proceeding. All right, so this is oversight.
Um, a couple other things um, that are related for the most part. Legislative veto. This is, it used to be that when the president had an executive action, the legislative branch would sometimes create what was called a legislative veto. And it basically took a majority vote in one or both houses, and they would say that you're not allowed to do that. The legislative veto is unconstitutional. It is. It was declared unconstitutional by the U.S. versus Chada, and basically it said that that takes that it um, takes the legislative branch's power of oversight too far. So there are limits to what they can do through oversight. And finally, this is not really related to oversight, but constituent services. Constituent services are essentially what representatives do um, to get reelected. So if someone is calling, trying, they have not gotten their social security money, they call the representative, and the representative takes care of it because they want that person to vote for them. They send letters in to the members of the Senate. Um, and the senators' staff respond to them. The senators are rarely aware of all the constituent service. I mean, they know that's what they're supposed to do, but they don't know what the individual requests are. But their staff does it because it's what gets them re-elected. Um, so when I interned in Senator Barbara Mikulski's office, I spent my job opening mail, sorting into piles, and then I wrote letters responding to constituents needs and they're edited by people to make sure that it was the correct language but that is I mean it's what they do and people call their senators and representatives all the time for ridiculous reasons some of them are, are legitimate like they're not getting their veterans affairs benefits they're not getting the social security benefits some of them are crazy like um, there's a gas leak in my house and they're like call the gas company and sometimes they'll even look up the uh, gas company's phone number so that they can do that for them. Anyway, so that is legislative oversight. Again, if you have questions, please write them down, and um, we will handle those in class. All right. Um, have a great day.